I saw myself leaving the organization because I just felt like I couldn't be in this anymore. I couldn't handle it, it was too much. And I remember seeing like my husband and my family leaving me because I didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. And my heart started pounding. I remember feeling really just scared. I finally got a hold of some Jehovah's Witness magazines in my own language. I read it and the first thing that came into my mind was, I feel brainwashed. Katya and her husband Christian are former members of the Jehovah's Witness Church, a church where they claim they experienced brainwashing, deception, and abuse. Um, Katya, let, let's talk about your uh, story today, your personal faith journey. You and Christian were married in 2009, and then in 2014 you state that you woke up and discovered that the Jehovah's Witness organization was not the truth, but a cult. Um, how did you wake up to that understanding? So it was a bit of a process. Um, at the time I was, we were serving in a Spanish speaking congregation and my Spanish was not fluent by any means I was learning, but it was not, I didn't understand it fluently. And so I, for about six months, I would say that was the process of when I was starting to wake up and I didn't realize it yet. Um, and because I was not receiving the Jehovah's Witness doctrine regularly in my own language. Um, I believe that is how I was starting to wake up. The brainwashing, the everyday Jehovah's Witness doctrine was starting to become less and less inside of me. Um, and I was starting to feel like I was waking up. I was distancing myself from their, the organization mentally without even realizing it. You both were born and raised in homes, families where each of your parents were Jehovah's Witnesses, and so you grew up believing that the Jehovah's Witness faith was the truth, held to the truth about God and about eternal life. Um, I'm really interested in your stories because I want to know how each of you personally came to understand and believe that the Jehovah's Witness faith to you was a lie and Christianity and Jesus is the truth. And so I want to hear both of your stories. And in this program, Katya, we're going to listen to your personal story, your journey of faith. And the next program, Christian, we're going to hear yours. So I, I want to begin, but I want to address this first question to both of you as a couple. You know, apart from each of you having to experience sexual abuse within the Jehovah's Witness community by its leadership, today, you talk a great deal about being free from spiritual abuse, and that term spiritual abuse. What do you mean by spiritual abuse? So what that implies is you've put all your faith into uh, the concept of God organization. So as Jehovah's Witnesses, we were taught to be loyal to the organization. Organization comes first and you believe that God is behind this whole organization, that this organization is the one true organization chosen by God. So when you discover that this organization is false, you start to also believe that God isn't real as well. And the words that they use in the organization, such as truth, uh, knowledge, love, um, as a former Jehovah's Witness, you start to have doubts in those meanings as well. Now, can each of you maybe give me um, one personal experience of having um, that spiritual abuse pushed towards you? They, they use certain scriptures in the Bible, um, and they will take those verses out of context to fit a certain doctrine that they have, um, certain doctrines on how to treat women or how women should be viewed. Um, quite low in society and so um, you grow up feeling really suppressed and when you leave some a lot of women still um, associate how God views them as a woman because of what those scriptures say so now they look at the Bible with critical eyes instead of seeing God's love in the Bible for them so that's that's spiritual abuse where they use the Bible to abuse you 
Okay, what about you, Christian? You know, they say, you know, we love you guys, or I love you. And I'm just kind of like, I've heard that so many times. I'm just skeptical. Do you actually love me? Because I've had so many people tell me that every day in the past. And that word love, do you actually mean you love me as in you won't, you won't leave me, you won't shun me if I don't agree with you? You know, in uh, the Bible, there's uh, God has unconditional love for us, but they, Jehovah's Witnesses, the organization teaches conditional love, and they use the word love and God together, but they don't teach what the Bible actually means about love. So, um, when they say "I love you" and then they shun you, or "I love you" and they treat you bad, you associate God's love the same way. And when you leave, God and love are just you don't understand it and it's actually triggering and it's offensive now and it's just it's really sad and that's why I believe spiritual abuse plays so much in why so many people become atheists after leaving these groups. Now without going to too much detail, if um, when you talk about spiritual abuse, if you push back or you challenge some of their teaching, um, the result is? It's almost like as if someone let off a, a stink bomb. Instantly everyone will turn their attention like the Borg in Star Trek and just look at you and think something's not right, something's off. This person doesn't smell right, this person doesn't look right, this person isn't thinking right. We have to correct his way of thinking. He's starting to have dangerous thoughts, which is any form of doubt, any form of questioning the leadership, you know, and it, you, in, you instantly become a target for questioning the the general uh, um, Jehovah's Witnesses will start to separate themselves from you and the leadership will try to come towards you and form a wall, a barrier between you and them and just see are you how dangerous are you, where are your thoughts. And if you don't um, agree to their viewpoints on these doctrines, if you have questions or doubts or you just don't agree with it, you will be labeled an apostate, which is... Um, how you become shunned. It's the biggest sin in their eyes. In, in further conversations, you've talked about you felt yourself becoming spiritually weak. What do you mean by that? I started to feel, and I remember telling my husband, I'm starting to feel not zealous, not zealous for the truth, for the organization. And that meant not feeling excited about their um, meetings like I used to be, not feeling, I used to have this kind of fake happy smile all the time that you put on when you go to the meetings. I was having a hard time pretending. I just didn't seem to care about the organization like I used to, but I still believed in God. I just didn't care about the organization. Help me understand. I, I've never known what it is to be brainwashed, and people watching may not understand that. So can, can you kind of describe what it's like mm -hmm. to be brainwashed? In a religious sense, you're from infancy taught one um, set of information and you're not allowed to research anything outside of that and you're taught the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and a lot of the meetings that we went to, um, they would give you publications outside of the Bible that had all the doctrines, basically everything you are to believe about God and they expect you to read it and believe it without question, and they have questions for you, but you can't give your own personal answer. The answer is written for you. So you really have no independent thinking. You, you don't form your own opinions. You don't really have a personal um, relationship with God because it's all shoved down your throat what to believe and how to believe it. Looking back, do those magazines contain um, aspects of Christian faith? Yeah, so there's some parts, um, they mention Jesus, you know, they, they do have parts of the Bible in it, but they um, are quite off on who Jesus is, completely off course. Um, and a lot of these uh, um, articles within these magazines are their own doctrines, and they to, to try to support their doctrines, which actually really aren't biblical, they insert little scriptures. But when you read those scriptures in full context, you realize actually that doesn't go with what they're saying at all. But because you've been reading it your whole life and brainwashed, you don't question that. But when we look at it now, we're like, that scripture has nothing to do with what they're saying. You became, over a certain period of time, spiritually weak to the Jehovah's Witness faith. And then one day at work, a TV program comes on, captures your attention. What yeah. did you hear? Yeah, so uh, we do cleaning for work, and I was just cleaning one of these houses that I always clean, and they had their TV left on that day. Um, they were actually a Christian couple, which I wasn't aware of 
but uh, they are. And they had a TV show on about, I guess, the gospel. Um, and it was talking specifically about Jesus and that Jesus is the truth. They kept mentioning the truth, which is a word that is very much used as Jehovah's Witnesses towards the organization, but they kept saying Jesus is the truth. And I remember cleaning and I didn't, like most Jehovah's Witnesses would turn it off because it's nothing, they don't want to listen to anything that's not from Jehovah's Witnesses. But for some reason, even though I didn't fully agree with what I was hearing, I was very curious. And I remember cleaning in that area a lot longer than I should have been because I was just stuck listening to this concept that Jesus is the truth and about love and all these things that I was foreign to. And it just really captured my interest. And I actually, it was two different accounts, two different visits where the same TV program on was was playing this message about Jesus being truth. And even though I didn't believe it right in that moment, I definitely believed that Jesus was planting a seed in my brain. So what you heard on those TV programs about Jesus, was he a different Jesus than what you had learned about in the Jehovah's Witness faith? Absolutely. Well, they were they were mentioning Jesus being God and, and Jesus being the truth. And as a Jehovah's Witness, um, the organization was the truth. And Jesus was merely just the greatest man that ever lived, not God himself. And we don't come to Jesus for life. Um, so hearing all these things was very foreign. Um, I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus at all. And this seemed very much about a relationship with Jesus. All the attention was on Jesus. So it was a very, it was night and day. Um, and just the fact that as a Jehovah's Witness, I used to see Jesus as merely when I pray to God, Jehovah, I stamp my letter, my prayer with Jesus to send it off. That's all he was, was like a stamp in Jesus' name and you send it off. As opposed to this message was making him seem much more than just a single stamp. Hmm. The seed, you said like a seed was planted, hmm. uh, but your search continues. Yeah. Um, how did it continue and where did it lead you? One day I finally said, okay, like Christian, I need to read something in my own language, in English. So I finally got a hold of some Jehovah's Witness magazines in my own language. And I was so excited. I remember sitting on the couch, so excited to finally get spiritually strong and read my, like, read this information. And I remember opening it and I couldn't even get through the first paragraph. I read it and the first thing that came into my mind was, I feel brainwashed. And it struck me kind of strange because I'd never used that word ever in my life. I didn't even really think I knew what that word meant, to be honest. But it came into my mind um, and my heart started pounding. I remember feeling really um, just scared. I, I remember having a little bit of like a, an image in my head where I saw myself leaving the organization um, because I just felt like I couldn't be in this anymore. I couldn't handle it. It was too much. It was just, it was, I was losing interest in it and I was feeling overwhelmed. I felt like I was being burdened by the amount of works I was doing. Um, and I remember seeing like my husband and my family leaving me because I didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness and God killing me and all these things. Um, and I remember in that moment then I asked God, please forgive me for these thoughts. Like I shouldn't be thinking this. Why am I so going off the road here? Um, and I shut my magazine and I didn't bring it up again. But I will never forget that feeling I had when I read that magazine. I didn't feel encouraged. I didn't even agree with what they were saying. I felt like it was literally them telling me something and then giving me the answer. Now, in that search, um, the internet uh, videos uh, became a part of your, your deep search, and there was a scripture verse that sort of um, helped you come to understand truth. What was that scripture verse, and how did that relate to you now coming to a personal faith in Christ? Right, so about maybe a month after that, um, we had started stumbling across information on the internet that were talking negative things about the Watchtower organization that came to be true. So at this point, we had now completely woken up. We had realized the Jehovah's Witnesses isn't true. It is not the one chosen religion by God, and it is a cult. All these little things, plus the research on the internet, came to that conclusion. When we came to that conclusion, I never for a second doubted God's existence or even the Bible. Um, but I was very confused as to where God was now and what was truth. What is truth? What is that another organization by God? I didn't understand because we were so used to that concept. So I remember researching online for almost any religion out there that used the Bible that could be the truth. And nothing satisfied me. There was always something wrong with it or imperfect or something that seemed similar to the Watchtower. And I just, I couldn't find it and I felt kind of frustrated and I remember just telling God like where are you like what what is truth where do I go and I remember opening up a new 
I got a new translation of the Bible this time, an NIV, and I opened it just randomly. I just opened the Bible, and then wherever my eyes fell, I was just gonna start reading it, and I fell on John 14, 6. And that's where Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in that second, it was just like, I, it makes sense, I understand. It was like an aha moment where I was like, it's Jesus, just Jesus. There's no organization, there's no religion, it's just Jesus Christ is the truth. Just come to him. To you, it was that simple? That it was just, yeah. It was like all those things leading up, God was doing for me. And so when I was ready to see that, I would accept it. And I did, I just, I was like, I accept, I believe it. And it's like the blinders coming off. Absolutely, yeah. Now, um, that wasn't the moment then that you became, as Christians say, born again. Um, there was a little bit of a period following. So. It, Describe for us when when that scripture became real to you, the blinders come off. What was the sequence of events that led you to where you knew that your life had changed because of Jesus? Yeah, so after I accepted that scripture into my heart and I wanted to follow Jesus, I started to research more about Jesus. I, I just started reading the gospels from the beginning. Um, and I wanted to know everything I could about Jesus. And I remember watching some videos on YouTube as well, talking about who Jesus was and getting to know who he was. And that's when I discovered um, what I need to do to be saved, um, how to have a relationship with Jesus. And so um, along that journey, it led me maybe a couple weeks later to um, um, taking communion for the first time in my life ever. Um, so we went to a local church and we both took the wine and bread and I accepted Jesus into my heart that day. I told him I want to follow him forever and I repent of my sins and I believe you are the son of God and you died for my sins. And I believe that that was the moment that that whole thing came together and I was saved. So what, what, what happened in that moment? Like, how did you know that you knew? I knew because I know that the scripture says you will know that you are saved if you put your trust in Jesus and that you believe in him. And so. As a Jehovah's Witness, I always was taught you will never know quite, you will never be able to know if you're saved. You have to do all these works and maybe at the end of your life when God comes again, you might make it. And yet the scriptures is very clear that you can know now. There is no wondering and being afraid. You can know if you know Jesus and he knows you, you know, you know you're saved. And so because I knew who Jesus was and I believed in him um, and I put my trust in him, I knew I was saved. There was nothing to doubt about that. Um, and... I remember that the first time being in a church and just there, everybody was singing about Jesus and there was a completely different atmosphere. I remember crying, singing to these songs, um, so happy. I felt like such a warmth throughout my body. I'm usually cold and nervous type of person, but I was just so overwhelmed with like warmth and happiness. And it was just, yeah, the best experience ever. Earlier you talked about love and what that word love meant in the Jehovah's Witness community, but just listening to you explain what happened, love for you became different mm -hmm. when Jesus became part of your life? Yeah, well, yeah, totally. Love, I mean, love has been something that was um, used to hurt me my entire life, whether it was through um, abuse as a child, the organization abusing me, just the word love, it was such a trick. And to this day, I still have some PTSD towards it, but um, I, I just know God loves me because of how I've experienced his love in my life. The things that he has done, not only bringing me out of the call and saving me, like he came and got me and I'm just so grateful. Um, just all the things he's done for me. It's truly amazing and I didn't have a father growing up and I feel like I have that now with Jesus. So I just, it's just hard to explain, but yeah, I just know that he loves me no matter what I do or don't do and it's a good feeling, so yeah. Katya, Christians, uh, personal faith journey also um, is an important story and it's um, it, it, it's an amazing in and of itself and we're going to hear about that on our next program but before we conclude this program I, I want to ask both of you a question together and get your response because the choice to leave the Jehovah's Witness community wasn't easy. There was a price to pay, and you've mentioned a few times the word family. Maybe hard to talk about, but today, what's your relationship like with your families? Uh, well, because of the label we've been put on us by the organization as apostates, we are 
um, shunned, and anyone who is shunned is excommunicated, meaning you are not to have any contact with anyone in the organization anymore, including family. Um, so we've been out for about five and a half years, and in that time, we've been shunned the entire time um, by our family and our friends. So, I mean, my husband's siblings have had babies that he's never met them being born, like, hasn't even been told they're pregnant, like nothing. His grandmother's passed away, no one's even informed us. We've had to hear it through the grapevine of other people on social media. It's a complete cutoff. If you walk down the street and they see you, they walk the other way. It's as if you're dead and they teach that, that you have already been destroyed in God's eyes. And the Christian, how does that make you feel? Uh, well, obviously it disappoints me a lot. Uh, makes me very sad and um, years ago it, it would have made me very angry to the point where I didn't want to hear anything about God. But I would say that, you know, if we were never apostates, maybe we were mass murderers or maybe we were terrorists or something, at least we would get some sort of a, a yearly visit from the leadership. But because we had doubts in the organization, we're just more dangerous than any other human being you can think of on this planet. When was the last time you had any contact with your family, if any? Yeah, it's the last time would probably be about five and a half years ago when I, just before I was gonna be announced on stage that I am no longer Jehovah's Witness, I made an effort to go see my mother who I grew up very close with, um, to go see her at least one more time, say bye, maybe try to explain why I, you know, I'm being kicked out. And um, I just remember like my, my father took her quickly before I could say anything and just whisked her away, you know, as is common in the organization. Um, yeah, so that was the last time I got to see her but yeah I didn't get to say anything you never gave your mom a hug goodbye or anything right no yeah, and he was very close to his mom so it was probably the most hurtful part for him but I think the, the thing that gets us through it is not only we have each other which I think is a big deal um, I think having God in our lives and knowing his love for us and knowing that the Bible says that if, if your mother or father abandon you I will I will pick you up, I will be your parent basically. So I know that God has taken us under his wing and he has blessed us a lot. And if it wasn't for God, honestly, I can't imagine where my mental health would be through all this, quite frankly. So, yeah. Christian, we're gonna hear your story in our next program. But Katya, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Thanks.